Hi everyone. We're now going to be looking at the movements of the scapulothoracic joint, the acromioclavicular joint, and the sternoclavicular joint, where the clavicle meets the sternum. First thing I'd like you to know or to remind you is the scapulothoracic joint is the movement of the scapula on the thorax or on the rib cage. This is not a true synovial joint. We've talked about true synovial joints and what they contain, things like a joint capsule, articular cartilage, ligaments, etc. This is not that kind of joint. The scapula is a free-floating bone and can be better thought of as being similar to your kneecap or your patella. It's surrounded by muscles and the muscles control its movement. So in the movement of elevation, which is to bring the scapula up or shrugging your shoulders, there are certainly muscles which will do that. It can also have muscles, or does have muscles rather, which will pull it back towards the spine. That's in the movement of retraction. And then there are muscles on the front which will pull it forward into protraction. So the main movements of the scapulothoracic joint are elevation, muscles which also depress it, retract it, and protract it. We can see here at the end of the acromion, where the acromion of the scapula meets the clavicle, we've called this the AC joint, to abbreviate it, acromioclavicular joint. And this joint here, this does not move very much at all. In fact, if you were to palpate or feel your own acromioclavicular joint, you could elevate and depress your shoulder and you'll feel a little bit of movement right there on the end of your shoulder where the clavicle or collarbone meets the acromion. But it's not a lot of movement, and it's consequential movement, meaning that you can't actively roll your collarbone. The movement has to originate in the scapula. So the scapula moves, which moves the acromioclavicular joint. Again, very little movement here. This is a true synovial joint. Lots of ligaments protecting it, a joint capsule, but just not a lot of movement. It has some gliding movement, some rotation, but very little movement. And that's the same as you go over here to the sternoclavicular joint, where the clavicle comes and meets the sternum. Once again, the clavicle will rotate. It will move up and down a little bit and front and back, but very little movement. Once again, you can feel this on yourself by elevating your scapulae, depressing your scapulae, protracting or retracting. And again, see that it just doesn't have a lot of movement there. But once again, it is a true synovial joint ligaments, joint capsule, articular cartilage here. So these joints, the sternoclavicular and the acromioclavicular, can be sprained and they can develop osteoarthritis. That does not happen in the scapulothoracic joint.